Hey Robot Makers, how are you doing? Hope you have a good day so far. So do you want to design your own eye mechanism uh, for use with robots and animatronics and puppets and so on using Fusion 360? Then this is the show for you. Uh, so let's dive straight in. My name is Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Okay, let's get over to our keynote and uh, make a start. So I'm just, I've upgraded my version of uh, Ecamm recently and uh, there's a few pop-ups and things that are getting in the way there. Right, got that, got that sorted now. Okay, so let me get over there. So the session goals for today are we're going to be designing a robot eye mechanism using Fusion 360 and we're going to animate it, we're going to automate it um, using joints and things like that so that we can uh, bring it to life. Uh, it also helps us just test the parts. In theory, everything will work okay if we print it exactly as we design it. So we're going to have a look at the eye mechanism itself. Uh, I'm going to talk about why I've designed this as well. And then we're going to design the actual parts. We're going to dive straight into Fusion and start from scratch. Uh, we're going to build the upper eyelid, the lower eyelid, the arms, which are the two sort of yellow and red pieces there, and then the green base as well, uh, if we have time. So let's see how much we get through with this. Um, so we're going to be learning a couple of um, fusion modeling techniques along the way as well. So we're going to use the revolve tool to do some uh, cool revolve stuff. We're going to use the mirror function probably quite a bit. Uh, we're going to use some offset planes as well. Uh, we're going to be certainly using components. We're going to start with one of them and we're also going to use some joints as well to join everything together. And then finally, if we have time, because uh, it depends how long this takes to get through, uh, we will attach ev and everything together and automate it and animate it using uh, using joints. OK, and then at the end of the stream, we will have the usual um, mailbox Q&A and uh, just hanging out with everyone. OK, so what we're shooting for today is this kind of mechanism. I've got one on my desk over here, so it looks uh, similar to this. So there's uh, the upper and uh, lower eyelid at the front there. It's got a couple of arms. These ones are all printed in the same yellow PLA. Uh, there's a little servo there and um, there's a sort of base section that it all fits together on. So we're going to be printing these individual parts, printing them, we're going to be designing them in Fusion 360. So like I said, you can see there's the upper eyelid. I've got um, an unassembled um, piece here, an upper eyelid, a lower eyelid. They're basically the same, but they fit together ever so slightly differently. Uh, and we'll, we'll have a look at that uh, on, on the close-up shortly. The arm pieces are the things that sort of retract and uh, open and close the eye and they connect to the servo horn at the back there. Uh, and then the base just holds everything together. And what we'll be able to do in the fullness of time is construct a robot head that has these pieces um, embedded within it. So the reason that I've designed this is um, when I go to the uh, the Maker Central event in May this year, uh, I'd like to have a companion robot. I'd like to have one of these robots on my shoulder, whichever shoulder we choose to have there. And um, I'm going to be designing this robot. I've, I've conceptually designed most of the parts there. It's now ju just a matter of sort of productionizing it, making it into parts that I can print and that fit together nicely. And if I need to have spare parts, I have some of those and so on. And also we want to try something new that we've not done before, which is painting these parts. Um, so that it looks like a distress kind of steampunk vibe. Um, if you've ever seen the, the movie Clash of the Titans, we, we re-watched it for some research uh, this weekend. Uh, there's, a, there's an owl in that that's called Bubo, uh, and it's a sort of completely clockwork owl. Uh, it has wings that fly and everything like that, and it was animated by the amazing uh, Ray Harry Hansen, who did all the uh, Jason and the Argonaut, Sinbad the Sailor, all those kinds of films um, from the 60s and 70s. So this is kind of what I'm going for. This is my version of Boobo the Robot. And you can see there it's got two great big eye holes in this sort of steampunk fashion. It's got a little mouth, a little beak that can open and close. Uh, and I think I can make all this work with probably just about three servos. One for each eye and then one for the, for the mouth. Uh, I might have another one that turns the base. I've got four of these um, DS929MG servos and they're absolutely fantastic for... For this kind of use. Um, so it's going to be a wearable companion robot for the Maker Central. That's the main reason that I'm putting this together and I've called it Bubo and Tooty because it toots. Okay let's dive straight into this shall we. So let me just bring up um, Fusion 360 um, in the background there and then we can move right over to it. Here we go. Um, so I've got the full robot assembled just over here just in case we want to have a look at that uh, shortly well this is the actual just the eye holder piece the entire robot is is on a different um, model but we'll keep that one handy if, um, just in case we need it so the first thing we need to do I'm jumping around a little bit here is we actually need to go and have a look at the website that I've put together that's got all the instructions on it so let me just bring that one up and you can see where all this actually lives so if I just go over here 
So on kevsrobots.com, I've just started and I've and probably have a sneak peek of it. There's an, a robot eye mechanism course in our learn tab. And on here, you can see we've got all these different notes here, what you'll learn about, uh, what you'll need. You'll need Fusion 360. And there are there are some free licenses available for this for hobbyists, for educational users. Uh, you just need to go through the registration process and select that. I believe you might just have to re-register every year, but uh, you have the pretty much the full functionality of Fusion 360. Um, so the first thing we need to do on here, it says, is we need to open Fusion 360. We need to create a component. So we're going to create a component. So let me go over to Fusion and let's start doing that. So I'm going to be following these actually on another screen just to the side. I've got my iPad next to me uh, and that will just help me make sure I don't make any mistakes with this. So we've got a brand new file here. We've not saved it or anything. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new component. So the first thing we need to do is give our component a name. So I'm going to call this one, let's drag it away from my little head there. We'll call this one eye mechanism. So the reason that we want to create components is this helps us separate all the different parts out. It's better to do it now than trying to do it later on once we've created all the sketches and all the relationships between the different parts. It's much cleaner to be able to do this too. And every time we do something down here, you'll see that there'll be a timeline where things get created. So once that timeline happens, once things start appearing on that timeline, you can jump back in time and, and create and correct things. Um, but it's easier if you just try and get that right first time. So by creating the components, that really helps us with that. Uh, and you can see here where it says eye mechanism and it's got a little eyeball next to it. It's got a little disclosure triangle as well. And it has this little radio button there and that says that it's the active component. So what we want to do we want to just take a, a note of that. So there's a little eyeball here. That one will enable and disable, make it visible or invisible. And when we've got lots of different components, that's really helpful to sort of just get to the piece that you're interested in. We've got the name there. The little cube means that it's a component. And that little dot there just means it's the active component. So if we were not hovered over there, for example, we could make that one the active component. Now, we haven't got anything on the screen yet, so you can't really see what's happening. But it actually um, fades away into the background once you've selected the active component. OK, so next we need to create a sketch. So I'm going to create a sketch and I think this time I'm going to create a sketch on that base plane there, the sort of top down plane. Uh, and let me just quickly look at my notes there. So a couple of things to look at here. There's there's a, a red line and a green line. So the red line is the X axis. The green line is the Y axis. And we're looking straight down the blue axis, which is the Z axis. And you can see at the top right here, there's this little thing called a view cube. And if you click and drag over this, you can actually rotate around in 3D all the different axes. Uh, but we want it to be looking top down just for now. And there's also this sketch palette thing here. Uh, and that's got a few different things we can press look at and then it'll directly look at the model. We can slice if we want to do that. Um, and there's a couple of other things there that we, we don't need to worry about just yet. We'll come to them as we uh, we move along. Right, so the first thing we need to do, uh, we need to create a circle. So there's a couple of um, primitives over here. That's going to get irritating as it jumps around like that. Let me just see if I can uh, stop it from doing that. So there we go. Zoom to app windows. If I do that, it should stop doing that irritating jump around thing every time I hover. Right. So if I click on, I can either click on the circle diameter tool or I can press the shortcut key which is just C. So if I just press C I'm now in the circle mode and you can see there's a few different ways of drawing the circles but I'm just using the circle diameter. So wherever I click now and as I hover my mouse over that origin point that little puck in the middle where the both the X and Y meet um, it'll lock that in place. So if I click that there and drag out I can now create a circle. I'm just going to drag it to there for a second and I want to set that circle to be a specific diameter. So if I press the D which is for dimension you can see it's now switched to this dimensioning tool and I just click on the edge there. Notice how it's blue that means at the moment it isn't actually fully defined. There is a, there's something that needs to be locked into place before the, the design is proper. So if I just click on the edge there you can now see they've got this little floating dimension. If I click on that I can type in 44 which is the first dimension that I want to create and then I actually want to create another inner circle I'm just zoom in on that so if I press C again I go to that middle point and then I zoom in there like that I've still got a blue inner circle the out one, outer one is black because it has that dimension so if I press D now there's a couple of things I could do I could either just t click on that there and manually type in say 40 and I'll get um, a, a black 
um, outline, which means it's fully defined. But I can also do a relative dimension. So if I if I just delete that one, sounds like a TARDIS. This doesn't. If I do D for dimension, click on that one, and then click on the other one, I can define what the relationship between those two is. So I can say I want it to be two millimeters thick, and this is actually going to be as you look at our eye profile. Let me just grab one of these. As we look at one of these eyepieces, we're going to basically revolve this round. So we're going to look at kind of end on, and we want to design what that profile shape looks like. So that's what we're going to go for there. Um, so next what we need to do is we probably just need to zoom in a little bit. So I'm just pinching to zoom there. And I'm going to press L. And L is our line tool. So if we want to draw some nice straight lines, we can use this line tool. So if I click in that center point again, see how it locks into place. I've clicked once. And then as I move around here, when I get completely horizontal, you'll see that there's these two horizontal lines that appear. Uh, and that means it's completely vertical. Um, I said horizontal lines, two vertical lines. And similarly, if I go all the way horizontal, you get two horizontal lines underneath it. And they're called constraints. And they're really great for making sure that your design um, is true, that it's um, like 90 degrees or whatever. So you can see there, it's even saying what the degrees are around the circle. And the other thing to note there is as I approach that circle, there becomes a point where it kind of snaps to the, the circle's geometry, this sort of a, a blue X that appears. And that means that um, it, it understands that there is a piece of geometry there and it's snapping to it. So that really just helps us lock that in place. I've just clicked there. So we've got one line. I'm going to click and do the same over here. So I just click there like so. So I've now defined um, a couple of pieces. Now, I actually don't want the rest of this uh, this circle. I just want that top sort of piece of pie at the top there. So what I can do, I can go over here to modify and I can click break. So if I click on the edge there, you'll notice that a little red X appears. And what it's essentially doing is it's going all the way around the geometry until it finds where it intersects with another piece of geometry. And that's where it's going to break it in, in pieces. So if I click there and I click there, and if I now press space, we'll, we'll go over to this selection tool so I can just select pieces of it. And I can now change that line from being a, um, a sort of proper line to being a construction line. So we can, we can toggle here whether this is a construction line and you get this nice dotted thing. And you notice construction lines, uh, they don't contribute towards the profile. So the, the interior of these pieces of geometry are sort of light blue. And that means that that shape is completely enclosed by the geometry that surrounds it. So if I click on that one there and I press X, X is the same as pressing construction. So I can either toggle it by pressing X or by pressing this line type thing here. So you can see now what's happened. Those pieces of geometry that are construction are kind of just in the background and are um, our main piece is now just contained within this piece of pie. I actually don't want these other pieces here, so I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to click on Modify and Break. I'm going to click on that part of the line and then this part of the line. And I like Break because it keeps the geometry there, keeps the relationship there, but it just means that you can then make these pieces into construction. So what I've now got is a very thin piece that's like a perfect arc. It's perfectly... Uh, in line with our circle and the reason I picked 44 millimeters and 40 millimeters is because I'm going to be using this uh, Adafruit NeoPixel ring um, so if I just show you that a little bit there so this has got 12 RGB LEDs on it and um, we can program this from like a, a Pico or a Feather ESP32, whatever we want, a Raspberry Pi. Um, and we can do some sort of nice animation or glowing effects with that for the for the robot's eye. And that's what I'm going to be using. So the, the, so the diameter of that, I think, is 38 millimeters. So that we need to have a bit of a gap. And then we need to have the eyelid go completely um, around that. So that's where I've got those particular dimensions from. So we've, uh, we've broken our geometry there. And then we need to create a little box just at the bottom over here uh, to give our eye um, a little um, like a shelf type thing. So let me just press L and I'm just going to draw out what I want this to look like. So if I do that, 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 I'm just clicking and it's it's following along. Now if I create like a really bad line like that, this is supposed to be a rectangle. And we can see there that this one, that one doesn't look like it's... Um, properly horizontal. So we can actually go over here and use the horizontal vertical constraint. And similarly, if I click on that one there, it makes that one locked into place. So there's only two dimensions. If I grab this here, you can see how it's not defined. So I need to give that line there, 
if I press D, I can bring that out. I want that to be three millimeters, and I want the other one at the bottom there to be four millimeters. If I press four, that's now black, that's now fully defined, and I just want to break the geometry on that piece just there. And then click in that piece and just do X so that our profile is nice and clean. If I just zoom out, so you can see now that we've got this kind of arc with a little foot at the bottom. And we're going to do one of the, the cool things in a second. We're going to ro revolve this round. So let's just click on finish sketch. So that's now just sat on, on the bottom of our uh, build surface. And what we want to do is we want to ro revolve that round this uh, axis here. So if I click inside there, so I've now selected that profile that we created. I'm going to go over here, click on create, and I'm going to click on the revolve tool. So you'll be able to see immediately once I click on this here for the axis, what's happened. So it's revolved it around the axis. Now we can we can do it as a full revolve round. So let's do a full like that. And we've got like a bowl shape. Um, or we can sort of just say we want it to be partial. And on this one, I want it to be 180 degrees like so. So we've now got the upper part of our eyelid. Uh, looks like the uh, that, that concert venue. <laughs> So there we go. That's the first thing we wanted to create. Now, did I want to create it that way round? Let me have a think. It doesn't really matter, actually. It doesn't really matter. Um, so let me see what we need to do next. So we revolved it around and it's whizzing through my pages here. So we, what we want to do now is we want to create the hinge. So let me just bring up a few of these pieces and show you on the camera what we're, what we're shooting for. So just move my microphone over here so I've got these two pieces that are going to fit together like so and there is a little point there where we can we can screw in let's get that into focus there why is the focus gone off on this there we go there's a little screw hole there there's two of them that overlap like so and if we put a, a bolt in there let's see if I can get this one to go in without dropping everything like so I've actually not prepared these pieces so they might be a little bit tight if I just screw that into place, like so, we've now got a little hinge. So there we go. So that's what we're shooting for. And you can see there we've got that edge as well. So what we need to create is these little hinge profiles. We need to create both of those on the top piece. Okay, so let's go back over to Fusion 360 and let's create that. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to create um, an offset plane. So what we need to do if we have some geometry here already, there is these um, these three plane um, at the origin point. So we have this plane here, we have this one here, and it actually names at the bottom of the screen. Just under my name there, it says that's the X Y Z uh, plane, that's the X Z plane, that one X Y that one YZ uh, and what we want to do we want to use that YZ plane so let's let's go over here to construct let's click on offset plane so we want to select that YZ and then it wants to know how far do you want to to offset that plane so if we, we can either just drag this arrow if we uh, we just want to play around with it but I want this to be very specific I want it to be locked to this point here can you see there it says snap just on the cursor to 20 it's going to snap that to 20 millimeters from our origin point so if i click ok we've now got a new plane that we can actually um, create sketches on so if i just revolve that round we can kind of see inside we can now create a sketch on that so let's do that next so let's click on create a sketch we can now, as I move the cursor over there, you can see that it's automatically selecting that plane because it knows that's something that we want to create sketches on. Now, the problem we've got is our sketches is, is, is in the middle. It's kind of behind and we've got some geometry in front of us. So what we can use is this slice option. If I click on that, it's kind of sliced through and brought the camera right to right facing the, uh, the plane that we've just created. So that's a, a nice option that we have just there called slice. Um, so what we're going to do is create a couple of circles. So we're going to create them from uh, this origin point. So let's just do that. So I'm going to bring one out. So the screws that I'm using are going to be M2 screws. And the 2 stands for the diameter. So these need to be 2 millimeters. And then I'm going to create another one from the origin point. Drag that out. And that's going to be 6. 
and we want um, do we want another one or is that good let's let me see yes I think we do need another one on there so let's create another one and that one's going to be eight millimeters so D for dimension and then eight okay and then I think we need to have a little piece of geometry as well let me just have a quick look at my model and so that's going to be let me have a think that's going to be that way so we need a little rectangle so if I press R for rectangle you can see there it's selected the two-point rectangle tool and you basically just click one corner and then drag it out and it'll it'll then help you define where you want your other um, point to be now I want this to be snug against this circle so I can either click on that little point there and drag it until it touches the circle and you can see it snaps into the geometry there or if I wanted to be lazy I could just click on the edge and I can use this tangent tool uh, and essentially that's what's happened down here it's created a tangent uh, constraint so if I just click on that there what that means is this line now completely touches the very sort of apex of that circle it's it's tangent to it so there we go um, and these things that we're adding are called constraints so you can see on here if I just zoom in a little bit you've got these like little symbols here there's one there there's one up here which is the tangent one and there's more of those uh, horizontal and vertical constraints as well we can actually switch those off if we want to by clicking on that button there and if we wanted to switch off the dimensions because everything was getting in the way we can do that too and um, we can also switch off the profile if we would if we don't want to see those sort of blue areas but um, they're actually quite helpful so that's that one and we can finish that sketch now that was quite a quick one for us to do oh, I knew I'd draw that wrong so let me just go back I want that that uh, rectangle to be down here so I need to be the exact opposite place where I put it so I can just click back on that uh, sketch just by double clicking it down here in the timeline so this is the timeline down here and what I can do is just draw out the other ones R for rectangle draw out the thing we wanted and then I'm just going to grab that point there. If I hover my mouse over it, I'll see it and it'll lock into place and then lock into place there. And then I can just double click on this one. And what it will do is it will select the entire piece of geometry and I can just press delete and then we've deleted it. So let's uh, let's finish that sketch. That's better. That's what I was shooting for. Now, does that look like what I expect it to look like? I still don't think that looks right. Um, Analyze. that's not great is it so what I think I will do what I think I will do what's happened is I've created the geometry on the wrong plane I, I wanted to create this on a, really the uh, the z, what was it ZX plane that one there so if I click on that click on that can I get that to redefine the sketch plane it'll just help me with the, the notes that I've made which are on that one there we go so if I do that I then go back to our sketch and let's see let me let me just delete those back there and then back there let me take me a second to recreate this so I just need to delete that sketch it's just on the wrong place that's all and what we need to do is do that offset plane from there to that point there and then we, what we wanted to do is create that sketch so if I can click on the create sketch and then click on that plane click on slice and we had those that's better that's what I was looking for so now we what we want to do is create the circle at that origin point there we go that's better and there was, so there's three circles and we can dimension them now so the first one was two the next one was uh, six and then the last one was eight okay and then we have that little rectangle from the origin uh, there we go that's much better so let me just see on my notes what we wanted to have there yes that does go down so that locks into that one and this one locks into that one there perfect that's what I was going for right okay so what we want to do now is we want to do some operations with those um, double sketches so I'm just going to move my camera view into a bit better way to see this and what we want to do is we want to um, extrude away some of the uh, material that's there and also extrude to join some material so let's do that now so I'm going to select let's make sure I've got the right thing there I'm going to select the entire circle uh, like so so if I just press E for extrude 
then I select these pieces. I'll just do the whole thing for now. And I've got this arrow and I can either pull this way or I can push that way. And you can see there it's kind of either deleting one side or deleting the other. And that's because currently the operation is cut. And I want that to be join. So I clicked join and the actual distance I want it to be is two. So minus two millimeters and I'm going to click OK. So let's have a look what's happened. It's created this little circular bit. Let me just move that. I believe if I just click on that little house button, which is the home button, and that just sort of resets the view. So let's do that. And then let's just spin this round so that we can see what's happened. Uh, so let's look at it like that. There we go. So we've got this little circle and that's not quite what I need. So what I'll need to do is some further operations, but I've now got this new flat surface that I can use and I can use the same sketch that we have already created and I can use that new surface um, as an object to, to do some further operations from. Now that sketch has disappeared and this often happens so on the right hand side over here in the browse thing, you can see that our sketch that we created um, has disappeared. So if I click on that little eyeball there, you can see now that our sketch is back. There we go. Uh, what I want to do is I want to use that, that larger circle to get rid of some geometry. So I can use that one. Let me press E for extrude. Let me make sure I'm in there. E for extrude. And let's just click on all the bits of the profile that we actually want. So we want that piece. We want that piece and that piece. Uh, let me have a look. Does that look correct? I think that's good. And then instead of extruding, if you look where the, the actual plane is, where this is extruding from, I don't know if you can quite see that, but the, the plane is, is on the back side of this sort of puck that we've created. So what I want to do is say, instead of the profile plane, I want to use an object, and I'm going to click on that top surface there. And now any operation that I do, such as if I pull that over there, it's going to cut away um, the geometry um, to whatever whatever de depth we actually say. So I also need to include that um, extra piece of profile there as well. So let me just do that. Let me just do E for extrude. So we want that piece, that piece, that piece, that piece, that piece, like so. So it's kind of like a D shape. And then let's just do that again. So we wanted the profile plane, we want it to be the object, we want it to be that surface there. And then we want to extrude all the other pieces away. So if I just zoom back a little piece there, and the way that we can do that, rather than it specifying an, a, a distance, we can just say, just get rid of everything all. And it will cut away all the geometry that we don't want. So if I click OK now, we've now got, if I just turn off that sketch as well, so you can see what's going on, we've got a nice flat piece and we've also got a little piece that's uh, also been removed just here um, which means that when when the things rotate they've got something uh, they've got a bit of uh, clearance to be able to do that now I need to actually put in the hole as well so that we can extrude um, so we can actually put the screw in so let's bring back that sketch again let's press E for extrude and let's select if I click and hold I can select that profile through the existing geometry and I can pull out this hole here. Um, in fact, I can do it in both directions. I can say um, symmetrical, and I can also use the distance to all as well, and that will get rid of both pieces. So we've now got uh, a hole uh, in the piece that we're looking for. Now, just because I like things to look nice and tidy, I don't like the way that this, uh, it looks like a bit of like a pair of headphones, but there's a piece of geometry there where it's kind of a little triangle. So what I'm going to do is it just extrude away the extra piece that we don't need. So E for extrude. I'm going to click on that there. And I'm just going to pull that out about, say, three millimeters. And that's going to be a cut operation. And if I get rid of the uh, sketches now, you can see what we've now got. We've got this nice um, hinge section. And this top section here is where the other piece will actually go over the top of. Now we need to do the same thing on the other side and we could sit here and we could just draw out the same sketches and per, per, you know, perform the exact same operations that we've just done or we can use the mirror. So let's go to create and mirror. Let's select the objects that we want to or the features. We can either select features, bodies, faces or components. 
Features are things that are in our timeline. So if I click on those past four operations that we just did, I click on select the mirror plane and I select that mirror plane there and click OK. We've now got an exact duplicate on the other side of our model. So we've now got, that is now our, um, what would that be, our lower eyelid, top eyelid. Let's go for that one. Which one will it actually be? Does it really matter? I think that's going to be our our bottom eyelid. <laughs> so what I'll do, I'm going to come over here and I'm actually going to rename this component. So if I just click on that and rename and let's just call this lower eyelid. Like so. And what we can now do is we can create the next eyelid. So yeah, we're making good time here. I think we should be able to get through everything we need to. So I'm gonna click down here and oh look, we've not saved our document. So what we need to do is save our document. Um, so if I click on the save button, I can call this one eyelids, let's call it eyelids live. Eyelids live, okay, click save. And it's now updated that and it says version zero. Now Fusion is really smart. It will save every version of your model every time you click save. And if you use that model in another model as like a component, and then you go back and update your original model, it knows about this and it can keep everything um, sort of in um, to the latest version because of this version management thing. So all we have to do is just click the save button and it will update any other model that's related to that. Okay, so what we want to do now is create another um, components. I'm going to click on the, the eyelids, the root of it, and I'm going to go over here and do assemble and new component. And let me just uh, get my notes ready for that as well. Okay. And this is going to be the upper eyelid. So upper eyelid. Okay, let me just get that to there. Okay. So this is pretty much similar to what we've just done. We are going to go and create a new sketch for this one, but we it's essentially the, the opposite of what we've just created. So let me just uh, get this oriented so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so let's click on that plane there. I'm going to also leave in the background the lower eyelid visible. So you can see that we can either turn it off or we can leave that geometry. It's faded, but we can actually see it there. And we can actually use it if we wanted to in our new sketch. We can use those points that already exist. So let's create a, a new circle. So C for circle. That's going to be 44. So while it's still, um, I've just clicked once, I can actually type in into there the dimension I want. So if I do 44, there it is. If I do another one, which was... Uh, 40 and we also want to have the L the line going to the top uh, going to the bottom this time because we're doing the bottom one and then that's going to that side there and then we also need that sort of little foot thing creating so let's just do the geometry for that I am going to turn off the uh, the low one for now just so that I can clearly see what I need to do uh, so let's just create that so that's going to come out from there, there we go, like so. I'll just have to go back and check that this is correct. So does that look correct if I do that? Oh, do I need that to be up there? Let me see if I just go back like so. Um, why is Kevin not sure about this one? So. So, 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 I think they actually have to overlap, actually. So let's just do that. There we go. So that goes down there. So what we need is that side one there needs to be three millimeters. And that bottom piece there needs to be four millimeters. Nice and simple. And then what we can do, I'm actually going to get rid of that one. So it's, it's the exact same that we've just created. Um, and we're just going to rotate it minus 180 degrees so we could actually have used the other one to begin with so see how that's not quite those two have got a um, um, what's that called a perpendicular constraint so that they're always 90 degrees but I just need one of them to be um, either horizontal or vertical there we go like that um, so what we can do we could just end the sketch there and we've now got this uh, this this sketch that shows us the, the other part of the eyelid. Um, and you can see there that the geometry is still there because I haven't made those into construction, but we can still just 
pick and choose if I just do um, it's going to be the revolve function so let's click on that to revolve let's click on that piece there we need that piece and we need that piece and you see that we've had to select three things for our profile rather than just selecting the one so you can do it that way as well we're going to create a new body uh, the axis is going to be the same axis that we used last time like that um, but instead of it being 180 degrees uh, is that right let's just let's just try this and see if that works that looks correct to me actually let's just select both of them and we can now see there we go we've got our upper and our lower eyelid now currently they're both intersecting each other so we'll, we'll need to do something with some of the geometry on that to remove some geometry so that they're not sort of touching each other and we can actually use the inspect tool and the section analysis to to have a look and see so if i click on that point there what we can do is we can sort of drag uh, if we look from the bottom we can see that these these two pieces of uh, geometry are intersecting there and that's not good we don't want that to happen so we need to do something about that so let me just cancel that and that's what what the next sketches are going to do so let's hide the lower one let's just work on the top one for now and we need to do pretty much what we did before um, but it's going to be slightly different so let's just create the offset plane like we did before so construct offset plane from that middle plane there i'm going to click on that little point just there again click ok we're going to create a new sketch we're going to select that new plane we're going to click on the slice tool so we're slicing through it now and now what we want to do is create um pretty similar to what we did before so let's get my notes up there um so let's go from there we need one two three and do we need a fourth one one two three four i think we need an extra one for this particular purpose and then let's just do d for dimensions that needs to be two because that's the width of our screw hole now interestingly that hasn't locked into place and that should have done so why is that why is that blue we'll find out in a minute um, so the next one needs to be six that that's um it's done six between the two rather than six in diameter so let me just do that again so we just need that edge d for diameter six that one needs to be eight and then the top one needs to be um i think 10. that looks correct and then we need to do a little rectangle again so we're going to click that corner there we're going to drag this out and this one just needs to go to that point there and then that one it needs to go at that point there like so it's all turned black but means everything has nicely been fully defined so we can click on our finish sketch like so and now what we need to do is we need to get rid of a bit more geometry this time because if you remember that hinge that we created that's got a nice little sort of puck shape that's currently clashing with here so if we remove all of that geometry um, it'll work the way that we want it to so the first thing we need to do is just select this inner piece here if I just do E for extrude and I select um, that inner ring and then everything else within it so if I just click click on those pieces that inner piece there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the symmetrical so instead of it just pulling on one side if I do symmetrical it'll do it the same on both sides like so okay and I can do that minus two as well as a distance so I can just go down here to distance and do um, two or minus two it's the same difference really okay so that's got rid of a, um, some geometry uh, but we've got this little piece left here which um, do I want to get rid of that totally let me have a quick look at that so what we want to do is we actually want to we can leave that that's fine we're actually going to create some new geometry we're going to go back to our sketch we're going to switch back on in our upper eyelid and our sketches we can collapse down the other one there as well let's switch that one back on um where has it gone ah, so this sometimes happens so what i've done here is i've created a sketch and i had the main eyelid live 
component selected. And what it's done is it's actually created the sketch and the construction plane within that component rather than the upper eyelid. But the great thing is you can just move them. So I can click and drag that one into the upper eyelid, that sketch there, and it'll move that to the correct place. And I can do the same thing with that plane that we created as well. So I can just move that into the correct place. And then I can select our upper eyelid so that now we're just looking at that. Right, okay. So what do we need to do next? We need to, um, let me have a look. We need to extrude join a new piece of geometry. So we're going to we're going to select that sketch again so we can see it. We're going to spin around this side so we can see. Let's grab hold of that. There we go. So we can see what we're doing. Uh, so let's go for. Let's look at my notes then, that looks ever so slightly different, but I'm not sure if that matters too much. Um, I don't think it does. Just wondering why that little, this piece here isn't normally there. So let me just have a quick look to see what was going on there. When we did the offset plane, we did pick that point. Ah, we didn't pick that exact point, did we? Okay. So let, let it do that. That's better, right? For some reason it hadn't just uh, created the right, the right piece. It's created on the other side as well, which is weird. But that's fine. That doesn't matter. They're going to be mirrored, so that's fine. Okay, so that's what I wanted to do. So what I want to do now is create some extra piece. So this is like the piece that goes over the other piece. So let me just find that. So what we need to do is kind of like a, a D shape. So I'm going to go back into my sketch, and I'm going to add some extra pieces into that. So what I need to do is a line and the line goes from the the origin to the to the top then from the origin to the left piece there. So that point there. So there's one there and there's one there. Click OK. You can see them a bit better now just there. And that'll just help us uh, define the shape that we need next. So if I do E for extrude, I want that piece of the profile. I want that piece and I want all of those pieces there and I want them to go from let me have a C I want them to go from that face that's inside there so this this face I want to use that as the object that I want to project it from and the distance I want it to be minus two and that the operation is join so if I now spin that round, that's what I'm going for. Let's click OK. Uh, now, we're getting there with this. So this will enclose the existing hinges that we created on the uh, the lower eyelid. If we bring that one back, um, you'll be able to see if I switch that one on for a second. And sometimes what I like to do is just uh, um, change the colors so you can see what's going on. So if I go to inspect and display component colors you can see that these components have now got different colors to them so you can kind of see what's going on there there's a bit of clearance so that this can move around that's good um, and on this side uh, we've got some clearance so when we put our screw through there um, everything will work the way we expect we need to get rid of that little piece there as well but there's another thing that we need to do so let's just turn off that lower eyelid there's a gap between these two pieces so if I if I get that to look uh, front on Got a bit of problems there there we go rotate that round you see there there's like a little gap between them and that's not very satisfactory it also means it's a weak 3d printed piece and we don't want that so what we need to do is we need to select that um, that surface there press e for extrude and then what we're going to say is instead of it doing a distance we can say to object and then we just need to select part of that outer surface such as this surface here and we want that to be a join um, let me just back up and then we want it to be um, I think it's that adjacent surfaces let me just select the object again from there select that piece there we go so I've selected the two body and I've selected join and if I click OK and I remove that sketch you can now see that we haven't got that gap it's nicely filled up the uh, the the point the the gap that we we had and that means we can now get rid of that very last piece of geometry. So we just select this circle, press E for extrude, and let's just push that back. So I'm 
me just uh, do that one again, that one, that one, and that one, and then drag that back. We can then set the distance to all, so it just cuts the piece that we need. Click OK, get rid of our sketch just by turning it off, and you can now see that we've got the shape that we wanted to have. There we go. There we go, so that's looking nice. So I guess what we need to do next, we need to mirror it. So let's go to create, mirror, uh, uh, we, let's just revert the position. I think I dragged it by accident then. So the objects are gonna be those features. So it's gonna be the last four functions that we did. Let's just select those. The mirror plane is going to be that plane there. Click okay. And we've now got our upper eyelid. So we've got our lower eyelid and our upper eyelid and you can now see that they look they look good we can we can click on one of those surfaces do that inspect and section analysis and kind of drag that through to check that there's no intersecting geometry uh, that's looking good it's going to check there that that's not intersecting so they might be a little bit there but what we can do is we can uh, we can tidy it up that is um, just a piece that we need to tidy up on the other piece there so what we can do there if I just click cancel that that was on the the blue one which is our upper eyelid I remember before when I said I like things to be nice and tidy and I want to make sure there's no uh, geometry that shouldn't be there we can we can basically just do that we can click on that one extrude yeah, so that isn't a, a, a flat plane, that one. So let's just bring our sketch back. And let's flip over to the other side where the actual plane is. If I click on look at... Let's just zoom out and zoom into the sketch. There we go. Sometimes getting your head around these camera angles is a bit, bit of a... Um, there we go. So what I can do now, I basically just select that, oops, E for extrude, let's just select this inner part again. And let's make sure they're there, and then minus two, and we're just going to cut out to make sure that there's no geometry that shouldn't be there. So if I now look again at that geometry, let's just flip it over. And that should now be okay on that side. Oops. Using a trackpad, it's not the, the best thing to do that. That looks better. And if I just click on the bottom there, so it's completely, and we can also say, rather than using like a perspective, we can use an orthogra orthographic view. Uh, we can see what's going on there, so. So if I just drag that ever so slightly an angle, that's fine. That's fine. Let's just revert that position. So that's good. So currently we uh, we did that after the mirror. So I can actually drag that before the mirror, go back to the mirror, and then just where it's where the objects, I can just select that extra piece there. Click OK, and it'll replicate that across the other side as well. So this is the great thing about Fusion. You can go back in time and correct your mistakes and so on. Right, so I think that's everything for the main eyelids. Let me have a look. Yep, I think that's everything we needed there. So what we need to do now is create some other bits and pieces. So let me uh, go back to the main component. Let's do a new component. And let's call this one, um, let's call it the arm. Let's call it the upper, upper arm. Okay. So why is this going to go? So let me just have a think about this. We're going to have this. I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point where we create this. I'm just going to create this. Um, we'll take that round just on this plane that we're looking at now. So if I click create sketch, click on that plane, we'll take that round. And what we're going to do is just create some extra geometry. So I'm going to click uh, C for circle. I'm going to drag this one out and we're going to have that one about I think everything is six millimeters on this uh, this new one. I'm going to click on uh, L for drawing a line. I'm going to draw a line straight up. I'm going to press D for dimension and make that one. Uh, I think it's twenty. Uh, sorry, ten. I'm going to do another circle there. That circle is also going to be six. And what we will do now, we'll do L 
and we're going to create this kind of shape. So it's kind of like a, a Z kind of shape. Uh, and that length there is 20, that length there is 20, and that length here uh, doesn't matter because we're going to define an angle. So if I pull out there, 135 degrees, and that needs to be, now at the moment, because of that um, constraint that's locking the angle, um, we don't actually need to define what this length is here. What we can do is we can say that this line here needs to be coincident to the origin. So if I do that, that's now locked in place. It's now black, which means that everything is fully defined. So let's give this some uh, some thickness. I'm just going to create some circles along the way. They're all going to be six. So D for dimension six, D for dimension six, D for dimension six. And then I'm going to make these lines here just all construction lines just by clicking them and pressing X, similar to that one there. And what we can now do is just do L again, and let's just do some lines roughly where we want them to be, and I mean really roughly. And let's do that one there, and then there's going to be another one there, and then another one there. Now we're going to use the tangent um, function. I'm going to click on the line and just click on any part of the circle. Click on the line in any part of the circle. Just undo that. It does help if you do it in the order that they probably would touch, like that. So that they're, they're now completely tangent to these circles. And as I drag, you'll see that it locks into place with a little uh, blue X, and that means that it's found the the point where it's properly tangent to that uh, circle. So let's click on that to do the same. Click on that to do the same. Let's just drag that out, drag that out there. It's now turned blue, which means that this is a, a profile and it's fully defined there. So let's do the same again. Um, not sure why that one's there. Let's get rid of that. Let me just make sure that one is properly defined. Interesting, they're all they're all related to each other. So let me just click on that one and just do that as horizontal, vertical. That's fine. That's locked into place. Now this one, it needs to be tangent to that one there and also tangent to that one there. That one needs to be tangent to that one and that one. Okay, and then let's just find that tangent point that it snapped to it. And we need to do the last two as well. So that one, that one there. Okay, let's just make sure these are all snapped into place and we'll see that the profile turns blue meaning that everything is fully defined there we go so that's our arm shape now our arm just needs to have two screw holes in it one over here so if i do c for circle click on the origin point of that uh, there click on d for dimension make that two millimeters scroll oops scroll over here and do the same again on this very last one so c there and then D for dimension, and then two millimeters. Right, that's our arm, so we can finish that sketch. And it doesn't matter that that line there is overshot. Really, I should have locked it in place there, but our, um, our profile is what we need it to be. So if I just ever so slightly pull this out here, we can now press E for extrude. We can click on all the individual parts that we want for this. And do note that sometimes there's some sections they usually highlight in red and you need to make sure you include them otherwise you'll have like bits missing. So there's another one just there and we need that piece there. Scroll a bit across and then that piece there and then I'm going to make this uh, two millimeters thick like so. So we've now got our first arm section. Now the bottom arm is exactly the same but it's got a very slight offset to it. Um, I wonder if I can actually show you this on camera uh, a bit easier. So let me just go over to the camera here. So this is the model I've actually created. Let me get this to uh, to focus in. Come on. I do that. There we go. This bottom arm has a slight bit of extra geometry to it. There we go. I just start oh, highlight. It's just this little piece just here. Whereas the top one. You can see um, that one's flush. So this just brings it out a little bit and it just means where the two overlap. That zoom is having a real trouble there. Where the two overlap, 
um, it means that they can both be connected to our eyelid and we'll create these other pieces that connect to it in a second so don't worry about that we can go back and that point there is going to be connected to our servo okay so let's go back over to to fusion so that's our first arm the next arm we can create um, basically next to that and we can probably do that quite quick now because we've already got a lot of the geometry there already so let's go and create a new sketch and it doesn't matter that these are kind of floating around in space at the moment because we're going to actually join them together with joints and that's the bit I want to get to before the end of the show right so let's just create um, the shape roughly that we need okay and let's click on that line there let's make that one a horizontal vertical constraint as well as that one these need to be 20 in length so clicking on the line with dimension and the angle between that point and that point needs to be 135 and we also want that point to be it will probably lock into place so what we can do if we want to have these two if we want to use existing geometry that's already there uh, we can use the um, the p4 project if i do p for project i can say i want to have this piece of geometry brought in from the model into this sketch so if i just press ok now i've now got a point that i can lock that to so if i click on that there it's now fully defined based on that one point all the other pieces of geometry that we had there the only thing it hasn't got is it doesn't know how far this needs to be um, so what we need to do there is like we did before just click our line drag that down make that line 10 in length and we were going to do like a circle from that point as well and that circle is going to be six and we can now lock that piece to there and if i click on that point i can also just click on the coincident and then click on the other point i want it to connect to and there we go we've now got that fully defined geometry so i'm just going to make those all um, construction lines and then we just need to do what we did before which was circle do a circle a circle and another circle so that one is six so what we can also do rather than typing in the d for dimension if we already have something that's the same dimension we can now use the equals constraint so if i click on equals constraint i've got that one there selected already if i click on this circle here that is now equal to that con to that circle over there i can make them all related to each other so that they're all six in size without defining the dimension by typing in it just knows it's a, a relative dimension and then what we can then do is we can just click on the edge of there click into that point there so it just means we can get a head start on these uh, tangents if i do the same again on here lock that in over there here over there like so i'm going to get rid of i'm going to hide the the other arm just so that we can see what we're actually doing and once again i've done the same thing i think where i haven't had the the lower arm selected so what we can do um we can do a couple of things actually we can actually go back in time so did we create um we created an upper arm we did some stuff and what we need to do is create another component so if i go over here to assemble click new component let's just call this one lower arm like so and let's go back to the main uh, root thing and then we can basically just move our timeline back into the future and then we can select those sketches that we created and put them into the right place like so then we can select our lower arm and it just means it's a lot easier um, you can see now that that's kind of faded into the distance a lot more and we can see our own ge geometry that we're creating a lot easier so let me just rotate that back around let's just click on there click on there oh what it's just done there sorry i'm zooming ahead here it's created another sketch i didn't want that i wanted to edit the old sketch so let's just double click on that one there we go okay so let's just do another line from that point there to that point there so if it does this it likes to create lines um that are joined together you can just click on that little arrow there that little tick thing to stop it from uh, continuing to create related geometry if you like so we just need to check that these are all constrained i can see that one there isn't quite tangent so if i click that line click on tangent and then the edge of that circle that's now locked in place and i think this is probably the same as well 
So just need that to be tangent. So if I click the line, click tangent, and let me just undo that. Click line, click tangent. There we go. And then these last two. So let's see what's going on there. Let's just make them both horizontal. That should probably do the trick. Right, that's all we need there. We just need the screw holes. So C for circle. That needs to be two millimeters. We need another one over here. Let's draw it really big. Let's click on the equals. Let's click on that. And then let's click on that. And then that. They're two are related. Okay. So now let's do the same thing again. Let's just drag out um, the geometry that we want. Uh, let's hide the other geometry so that we don't get confused. And let's just quickly pull out this arm. Okay, let's just do that. We want it to be two millimeters in that direction. But then we also want to have an extra piece of geometry on this side. So let's bring back our sketch and just bring back that circle. And it doesn't really matter which side we do it on. I'm going to do it on the inner side. So the side that the actual sketch is on. I'm just gonna select and press E for extrude. Just click on that and I'm going to drag that by minus two and then let's just hide that sketch so you can now see we've got this extra piece of geometry there so that the two can sort of slide by each other like we had on our model that we looked at before okay so we've got both of our arms there as well and if we click on the root we can see now kind of how this is going to work but these need to be rather than inside these need to be outside and connected to another piece of geometry um, on the eyelid so we can very quickly do that so let me just select the upper eyelid we need to select that component let's zoom in and what i'm going to do on this piece the nice flat geometry here let's just click on create sketch let's just do um, a circle which is going to be around here that circle is going to be, um, let's just do six, that should be fine. And then let us make a line between that point and that point. That line, if I do D for dimension, should be 10. And that line can also just be a construction because we don't need it to do anything. And then I think what will help just our model, if we just create um, a line down there, line down there and a line up there. Let's just click on these individual lines and make sure they're all horizontal and vertical and it's having a problem there right so what it's saying is I don't understand how far this needs to go now rather than defining that that needs to be two millimeters I can just click on that line and I can now use the collinear constraint and collinear means that these two lines need to be perfectly in line with each other so if I just press P for project bring in that that geometry there from the other um, from the other model I click on that line now I can now do collinear with that line there and I can see that that line there's blue and that's because it isn't tangent so we just need to do tangent to there and that's now on the very edge so that just means that when we're printing our our model um, this has got a nice flat edge rather than it being curved it just makes it easier to print right and you can also see that this is in the correct place we want it to be so if I do E for extrude I click on that profile that we've just created I go to um, uh, extent type and with two object and then let's just select that there let's do join let's just check that that's not gone all the way through nope you can see what's happened there we've got a nice piece of geometry that's just been created we can click OK there and we probably just need to do one last thing on there which is to include um, the screw hole so let us just go back to that sketch that we created let's do C for circle let's just do a now because this one is going to have a screw going in it we don't want it to be two millimeters because that's the width of the screw we want it to be slightly smaller than that so that it can get some proper purchase on here so instead of being two we're going to do 1.5 now you need to probably experiment with your 3d printer to see what the tolerances are um, i know that this particular measure works fine for me so 1.5 will mean that when we put our screw in it'll really stay in place whereas the other ones we want them to pass through and have them uh, revolve around it or pivot around it Okay, let's just bring our sketch back on there. Uh, which one are we on now? We're on this one over here. So it's that second sketch. You can name your sketches. It's a good practice to do that. So for example, this could be um, renamed to, um, I don't know, pivot point, something like that. 
uh, it just helps you find it later on when you've got lots of sketches you're thinking where on earth is that so let's now just do e for extrude let's extrude this back by um, I'm gonna say minus two that should be enough um, to to eat into the thing let's just see where that actually goes to from the side on because I think we'll probably be able to get away with quite a bit more let's go let's go minus four uh, that's not going to eat into the surface there. Nope, that looks nice and clean. Uh, so we've now got that pivot point that the arm can connect to. We just need to do the same once more on the other side and then we can connect our arms up. And we're nearly done then. So um, let's just select our lower eyelid. And on the same side, we're going to use... We can use that same geometry, the same plane from the other model to create a sketch on this model. So now that we've selected the correct one there, we can do create a sketch and then let's click on that plane over there. And then over here on this side, let's create a circle. Let's create a line between that and that uh, point there. Let's make that a construction line. Let's make it horizontal. Let's make that again. We could either type in that this is six or we could just say equal to that over there for this one I'll just do six and we need to just define the length of that line there as being 10 we need to define our little screw hole again that's going to be 1.5 so that we get a nice purchase on it and then let's just do those two lines that go down like so we can just crudely draw it like that and then just click on them and make them horizontal and vertical and then if we do the same thing we did before where we press P for project, we can bring in some geometry. If I just click on there, it'll bring that edge edge in. You can see we've got this little edge now. We can do that collinear constraint between that edge and that edge there. Right, okay, finish sketch. Let's make sure our sketch is selected. Let's open up that one there. Let's call this one pivot point. So we can find it easier. Let's switch on the sketches. Let's only enable that one that we're interested in. And then let's just press E for extrude. Let's extrude back all the pieces that we want. And we want them to go to the object, which is that surface there. And we want it to be a join, like so. And then let's bring back that pivot point again. Sketch, let's press E for extrude. Let's select the screw hole and then minus four, like we did on the other one as well. Okay, let's turn off that sketch. Let's turn off the sketch on the other one. And let's have a look at our model to see how that's coming along now. Okay, so this is looking good. So what we can do, we can uh, we can move these arms around in a minute. The thing is at the moment, everything is kind of floating in space and nothing is related to each other. So in Fusion, you can create one um, structure and say that that's grounded and everything else is connected to that. And anything that's get connected or has a joint um, will inherit that ground property. Um, it'll kind of be related to that ground property, I should say, rather than inherited to it. So when I'm moving these things around, Fusion doesn't know what to do about that. It's not been included in the timeline and it might be really critical to capture where those components are or not. You might want to revert them back. So you've got two buttons over here. One is revert position. It just puts everything back to where it was since you last touched it. If you move something and you want that to stay there, you can click on capture and you get a little capture um, uh, feature at the bottom on the timeline. So you can actually get rid of that as well. So let's just do the last sketch, which is our base sketch all my notes in front of me here right and this one isn't a complicated one to do so let's just tidy up our browser we can switch off all these individual things like this or there's another feature we can do let's create a new component let's just call this one base and once that's been created so now we've got um, we've got five components we've got lower eyelid upper eyelid upper arm lower arm and base if i right click on base i can say isolate and what that means is we're only looking at that one thing and what isolate has essentially done is turned off all those other things it's a way of very quickly um, just looking at one thing rather than having to, to figure out which ones you need to turn on and off so let's just do that for now because um, it might get a bit confusing uh, if we're trying to look at everything okay so what we need to do next let's just recenter our 
our home thing and we want to create a base and we're going to create kind of create it looking at it from this plane here so let's create a new sketch and this is kind of going to be like an L shape so very roughly it's kind of going to be like this shape L shapes like a C shape so what we can do now we can add some uh, dimensions to these things so that needs to be three that also needs to be three so I can either do an equals or I can click on the dimension that I want it to refer to so it's now got like a relative dimension by the dimensions name so each one every time you create a dimension there's a little table in the background you can actually see it in this uh, parameters thing of all the different um, dimensions that you've created so on this sketch there you can see you've got d84 dimension 84 dimension 85 and dim dimension 85 is actually looking at dimension 84 <laughs> you can create your own parameters as well if you wanted to um, but we're not going to do that today okay so what we also need to do let's just have a circle and let's have a rectangle that's going to be completely tangent to that so i'm just clicking the tangent and the edges and then i'm going to define that as being the 48 sorry 44 and let's make that circle still tangent to that point there so it's kind of within it and then also tangent on that side too there we go so that's going to come down here um, and what else do we need to do so we just need to define the distances between these things so the distance between that edge and that edge there is four and similarly that edge and that edge there is four and that height down here between that and that is also three so we could just click on that three up there yep that looks good and if I click that edge there I want the middle of that edge to be exactly on the origin and there's actually a, a constraint for doing that it's called a midpoint constraint so if I click on the midpoint and I click on the point where we want that to be it's now got this little triangle it's now exactly on the origin okay I actually don't want these uh, to be that high up uh, these are going to be the the sort of arms I just show you on the model this is going to be these two arms and that's the, the profile shape that we're actually creating now um, and I can create a collinear constraint between that arm that arm there and that arm there like so so as I move one the other will move in height with it as well okay so let's just do a little cross like so now notice as I'm as I'm clicking along this line you'll also see a little triangle up here I don't know if you can just see that as I click there and that's the midpoint that's the midpoint constraint sort of being handily fusions helping you see that there's a there's a nearby piece of geometry that you might want to select uh, so that's that um, and then finally the gap between that bottom and that line there I think is just one millimeter and then the height of these we want that to be three millimeters from that line there so between that and that needs to be three millimeters and because that other one is collinear to it that's locked into place all our geometry now looks um, good I'm just going to make sure that these are just construction and the other bits that remain are the bits that we needed right so let's click OK so now what we want to do is we just want to make we want to just extrude out that profile I want to do that by it's six so let's do e for extrude click on the profile now if i press six it's going to extrude it back i actually want that to be in the middle so that it has, so that the uh, the middle of the extrude is actually along that origin point so where i've got the uh, the distance i can say let me just uh so i want it to be symmetrical and i want the measurement to be the whole measurement so it's now extruded it both sides but it's still it the, the entire measurement is six millimeters so it's extruded it three millimeters each side so if i click ok there we've now got um, that piece there and then we just need to create a nice piece of geometry on the side here and this is going to be the screw hole so if i just create a circle and another circle this one is going to be two millimeters this one is going to be six and if we just make that Co um, tangent to the top tangent to the side 
that should lock it in place. We can finish that sketch and what we can do now is just extrude those little corners and the middle. If I do that all the way, if I say extrude that all the way, it'll do the other piece as well. And we've now got a little kind of bracket to put our, our pieces in. So we can now unhide, unisolate, and if we select the root piece there, we can now start doing stuff with this with uh, uh, with joints. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this piece first. And what I actually want to do is I want to ground this piece first of all. So if I select base, I right click, I can say ground. So now if I try and drag this, I'm clicking and dragging, it's going nowhere. It's grounded, it's sort of rigidly locked in place. This one isn't, isn't uh, related to any grounded geometry, so it's floating about. And what I want to do is that, cir that circle there, I want to create a joint. So I go up here to assemble, I click joint, and I need to select two pieces of uh, geometry that are going to be related. So I'm going to click over here. And if I hold down command, I can actually, probably easy if I zoom in on this, I essentially want to get that middle piece just there. So let me just, that little X there, there we go. And if I zoom back now, it's now selected saying, what's component two? What else do you want this related to? So if I spin that round, and I click on that there, it's now going to lock that in place. Now, if, as we look at that uh, front on, it's a little bit lopsided. Um, I'm actually going to go with that. That's okay for now, but we might decide later on that we want that to be, you know, two millimeters, 1.5 millimeters off. So we can actually adjust that in the joint itself. But for now, I'm just going to say that's okay. Um, so that's the first piece and the type of joint. If I just double click on that joint, we can say that this is a motion joint. So it can either be rigid or it can be a revolute joint. So look at that, it will spin round and we can actually have minimum and maximum rotations on our joint. So you've got this little flag here that you can uh, you can see. So when it's closed, our eyelid is going to be minus 90 and when it's open, it's going to be zero. So minus 90 is the maximum that we want that to open to. Um, and the minimum is going to be zero and the resting point is going to be zero. So if I now do preview motion it's going to go between those two points open and close so there we go we can now do the same with our other eyelid so let's just uh, revolve around there so what we want to do is get this piece of geometry here that circle click on joint and let's just spin around using the little view cube and I want to select that other surface just there so the, I could either do it to that point there, or I can actually join it to this original piece of geometry and offset it. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to offset it by, by I think it's two millimeters. Yep. So let's just go down here and just make that two like so. Let's go and double click on our joint again and let's set the motion to be revolute. So this time it's going to go it's going to have a minimum, maximum and a rest. So let's just rotate this round. So it's going to start at 90 and it's going to rotate to what's that, 180. So let's go. Minimum is going to be 90. I think that's right. And the maximum is going to be 180. And then the resting point is going to be 180 as well. Uh, is that right? It's going to be... What did we say that was going to be? Minus 90. Is that right? Is that the bottom one? That should be the other way around, shouldn't it? Yep, sorry. So it should be minus 180 for the minimum. And it should be... What's that? 275. So minus 180. And maximum it should be... Minus 275, is that the right way around? I might have to just reverse those. Minus 275 and minus 180. Like so. And then resting 
that's fine now let's just try that so it's going to go like that or like that there we go click ok now at the moment these two pieces are not related together in in how they move so i can move these individually um, so what I can actually do, I can create a joint that has a, like a relative motion between the two. They call it um, a motion link. So if I click on, let's just revert the position for both of those. Let's select the two joints. You can either do that up here in the little joint thing. So I can select one joint and the second joint. And then you can say, as let's just uh, animate that round. As one opens up, the other one goes in the opposite direction. I think that's... What we want to happen let's just try that so let's just try the angle so that goes between 0 and 255 we want that one to do minus let's try that 90 to minus 90 reverse that it's been a while since i did this I didn't write this one down, so let me just try a few things out there. Ah, right, let me go back to the one I prepared earlier. And let's just have a look at what that joint looks like. So we have, I think it's that one there. Let's have a look. So at the moment when I open that one, it will open the bottom one as well. And that's because they have like a related um, geometry and it's using that... Uh, um, that assemble and drive joints, I think. So that's that's how we do it. Um, I would just be have to mess about with the, the angles to get those two right, but we can actually do something else instead. So let's just uh, reset the positions. And then we can also bring in these two arms as well. Now, what we also need to do is just have somewhere for the servo to go. So we just need to create some extra geometry just on this base piece so let me just make sure that we're in on the base um, and we we created that piece of sketch not on the base and we just drag that down to the base let's select the base let's edit that sketch like so and we just need to create like a, a bit of extra geometry there so it's simply just a rectangle that goes out and that rectangle goes out by i think it's 67 so let's just D for dimension 67 and it's just three millimeters thick like so. And then let's just draw another piece on here as well, which is going to be the servo holder. So let's just do another rectangle, another rectangle like that. And the bottom one is going to be uh, nine millimeters. The top one is going to be the depth of the, the servo that I'm using, which is 11 point six five that just needs to be cotangent to that and then the length of it needs to be excuse me 32 let's just do um a little sort of x shape there across here let's just make those um construction lines let's do two circles these are going to be the screw holes for the servo so these need to be just uh, two millimeters two millimeters and then the distance between these two is pretty easy to draw a line and dimension that line has been 29 millimeters and then making that line have a midpoint on that other line that we drew originally and then we can make that one uh, construction as well and then we just need to draw then um, another piece which is just like this and this is going to be the cutout for the uh, the servo itself so between that line and that line it's 4.5 between that line and that line that's also 4.5 okay I think that's everything we need let's finish that sketch let's just uh, extrude this out so if I just click on that profile there and let's extrude that back by let's do it the entire length shall we let's just if we just click on that edge there it'll pull it the entire length like so and then we just need to do the um in fact i'm not going to do it the entire length i'm actually i'm actually going to do it half the length so i think that's going to be about 32 i think it is so minus 32 
making sure I've got that right. Yes, minus 32. And that just gives me the right surface in which to build um, the the servo piece. So if I, if I just click on that profile there, if I click extrude, and I want to extrude those two pieces, like so. I want to extrude them in that direction, but I want them to start from an object which is there, like so. And I want it to go um, by, let me just find the measurement for that. So I want to extrude that by, didn't write this down, so let me just have a quick look on the other model, cheating. I made so many notes, you'll not believe. <laughs> The one measurement I've actually not got is just that that there, which is 7.8. So if I extrude that by 7.8, so if I go back to that uh, extrude, and I just change that to be 7.8, 7.8, um, that's now correct. Okay, we can now hide that sketch. So often when I'm creating something like this, I'll actually model up the individual component, such as the... Um, the servo. So if I click on my little search tool up here, I've here's one I prepared earlier. It's a DS929MG. I just search for that in all of my models. Uh, there it is. If I just click on that one there, conclude right click, insert into current design. So this is the exact um, servo that I'm using. And there it is. If I just click OK. Uh, if I just come off the uh, construction colours for a second, just by uh, doing Shift and N, you can now see that I've got this uh, this servo here. I can actually switch off the sketches in there as well. And what I want to do is I want to lock this in place over here. If I press A for appearance, I can also um, give these things colours. So there's some 3D printable colours that I like to use, and they're always like the matte plastic ones. If I use the matte green, for example, you can now see that I've got this nice green base, and it just means is it's just a bit easier to uh, to work with, right? So I'm going to do a rigid joint this time, so a rigid joint, and I need to just get underneath that servo sort of armpit area there, and then lock that in place. So if I just go over here, I click on that surface there. Might be a bit easy if I just tilt that up ever so slightly. And what I want is so that surface there, and I want to find that point there. So if I now just pinch to zoom back, and that needs to be basically that point. If I hold down command, I can do that like so, and then I basically just need to rotate that round by about 180 degrees. Click OK. And we've now got our servo in place where we want it to be. Now, before when I was saying about that measurement being like 7.8, the reason that the distance between, oops, between this surface here and where the end of that servo presents itself, that's going to be really important when we're building our actual model because there's going to be a servo horn on there and the surface of the servo horn has to meet with the arm nicely otherwise it's going to be sort of crooked and bent so um, you might have to change the the depth of where this uh, servo connects to depending on which type you have so if you're using like a I don't know, uh, an SG90, an MG90, something like that the distance between the top of the servo, this sort of plane and where the the spindle is can be a bit different they're all slightly different right but now we've got that in place we can now do the final bits we can hook up the arms so we want to get these arms let me just go back to the root we can also do a for appearance and uh, give our other bits and pieces some nicer colors so we could just like drag across the white appreciate the screen is blank for a second while i do that let's just uh, remove that oops let's just undo that a for appearance white drag that across there and then i usually make the arms just red so that you can i'm just dragging it onto the surface i don't know why the screen goes blank for a second that's a bit irritating okay so i can close that out and what we can now do is we can now join the the arms to these these various different pieces so if i go to the arm you always go to the piece that's going to move first uh, and that's just do a joint this is going to be a revolute joint it's going to be that point just there and that is going to connect to the 
that point just there like so uh, let's just rotate it round to be roughly where we want it to be let's just say about 90 degrees okay so now as we move that one you can see that they're sort of related together and I'll also be able to move this one and you know push and pull so when we connect everything up it'll work the way we expect and we need to do the same with this one so I used the wrong one actually I think I have so this is one with a little nodule I need that to go onto there so let's just uh, go back and edit that so let's just delete both of those actually let's just delete the entire joint uh, and let's just do that again so this actually needs because it's got this extra piece of geometry on here that sort of sticks out we just need that that piece to connect to the lower eyelid which is just there like so just holding down control if you find it hard it's probably just easier to zoom in on the piece that you're actually looking for there we go and that's the surface I'm looking for that looks right let's click OK let's just zoom back and then let's just do the last piece um, so let's click on joint let's click on that surface just there that one and then that's going to connect to that one just there okay okay and we haven't got a servo horn so we just need to bring one in I've got one I've designed earlier servo horn and if you're thinking you're cheating Kevin you're bringing all these pieces in you can actually go to GrabCAD and grab these yourself or you can design them the, the servo horns a very simple piece of geometry the servo isn't too difficult actually um, that's not too difficult either right so it's just having to think about that whoa what happened there that's not what I was after let's just delete that let's just try that again servo horn insert I think I did new drawing from design rather than insert into current design there we go so we've got this servo horn now and we just need to add some joints to that as well so what I'm going to do I'm going to just look at that I'm going to do a revolute joint I'm going to pick that top surface and I'm going to join that to excuse me the that point just there now if it looks like it's wrong you can actually just flip it and then it'll end up being the correct orientation if you've if you've done it right now that doesn't look right to me it looks like I've just slightly misaligned something um, so what I'm going to do is just check that is going onto there right so it must be that one that I didn't do right which is the original oh, right let's just get in there that should be it let's just rotate this round so we can see yep yeah, that looks perfect great and then I'm just going to set it to the sort of starting position so if I rotate to the right hand side there and I just close that data panel and I then just use the hand the pan tool to sort of look correctly what you'll find is you need the servo to be I've got mine here if I sort of zoom in there you can see that it's sort of at a, an angle it's sort of leaning leaning towards the eyeballs and that's because when the eyeballs sort of open up if I can uh, I can pull this one back on here you'll see that that pulls them back and it's it's just past 90 degrees when it's sort of fully open there so let's just set that to be whatever it is to begin with let's just do 60 for example so I can set that starting point if I just double click on that and just say the angle is 60 that should be a good enough starting point and then if I now just revolve these round I can then find the point where these two actually attach if I just make that what I might need to do is just uh, is just change that uh, original one that we created is it is it that one yep so I need that to be resting at minus 90 there we go and then if I bring that down so I edit that motion limits and I just say that minus 90 is actually the resting pot, um, state for that 
I can then rotate this one round and then find the exact sweet spot where that needs to be to work just right. Similar with that one. So, so what we need to do is just create a joint between that last piece. Let's just zoom in on that. This last piece and that part of the servo there. So let's see if we can do this. Now it might complain that there is um, a, a conflict, which means I'll probably model something that's slightly wrong, but let's just see if we can get this to work right. So I want that point there to be a revolute, and then I want that to revolute onto the servo horn. So let's just rotate that round there. Let's just click on there. Yep. Now it's saying that there is a conflict and that means that it can't actually make that joint work because the geometry is not quite right. So I would have to go back and see what I've done there, but here's one I prepared earlier. So let's go and see what is going on with that. So let me just, uh, let me bring in the eye base. So I think it is that one. Let me have a look what's going on there. So let me just uh, rotate round here. How are we doing on... Uh, is everybody still with me? <laughs> Looks like we've still got quite a few people watching. Uh, okay, so let's see what's going wrong there then. So what it's saying is if it rotates that round, where that rotates round and where that meets, it can't actually uh, connect to it. So for some reason, it's not happy with that. Now I did model this all out and check all the dimensions. So not sure why that's not quite happy there. Um, so let's just move this back. Is it because is it because of the joint constraints on there? So what I'm actually going to do is switch off those um, those motion limits for now. So let's just turn those off because they might be causing a bit of a problem there. So let's do that. So that now can rotate round. Let's do the same on the uh, the second one. Um, so. Joint number two, let's just basically just turn off all the motion limits on all of them. There's something you need to go back and tweak really just to make the model work well, but there we go. So can that now move? So let's just go back and edit that one again and see if that one, sometimes all you need to do is just go edit joint and then click OK and sometimes that fixes it up. For some reason though, it's really not happy about that. So what we'll do as well, well where we've got that um, servo horn at 6 degrees, let's go and check what that could also be. So let's just go and edit that joint there. Make sure I've not got any uh, joint limits on there. I don't think I did. <laughs> so Wayne says he's still here. Good, good. And let me see what's going on there. So... Where is that joint? So this is also where it's also helpful to name your joints as well. So that one doesn't appear to be, I thought that joint there was the servo horn, but as I'm rotating that round, it's not responding. So let's just try. So number seven is the, the one that we've just created. So yeah, number six, that looks, I'm gonna rename that one just so that we can see that that is the servo horn. Or oh, gone, as I just typed. And let's just see what if that one can work. Let me delete that number seven. That seems to be causing some problems. And then let's just look at this um, from the side. So we need that to be about there. And then this needs to sort of connect up like so. So that looks like that can physically work. Yep, they can definitely align there. So let's try recreating those. Ah, that's, that's the only thing. That's all that was going wrong was... Um, it couldn't physically meet the joint because it wasn't the right distance. That's all it was. Right, so let's go back there. Let's recreate the joint. And then let's just do an offset between the two. So let's create that first one. I just try and zoom in on this. Like so. Let's click on that middle point. And then let's click on that point over there okay see how it moved over a little bit and then what we need to do is decide what this offset here is so we're just gonna have to play around with this a little bit so I'm just gonna guess 
just guess one for now and let's just go to the back so we can see what's going on so that doesn't look correct I think it probably needs to be two so let's just edit that let's try two that looks like that's worked because it's not got the uh, the yellow background to it so now we can move this around and you can see that there's a there's a, a joint link there and then similarly we can do the same with this other one here as well so we just need to do a joint to the same spot essentially let's just do that let's uh, flip round I do like it when you solve a problem live rather than uh, just leaving it uh, so let's just do the same there so this is probably going to be offset by four so let's just uh, click on that point there we need it to be offset by so I think it's in that direction so the Z needs to be four let's try that yep that looks like that's worked as well so now let's just move everything about there we go so as this servo revolves round it's now going to open and close our our eye, eyeball there we go and the reason we've got a bit of a, a gap between the servo horn and um, the edge there is I'm not 100% sure that's the correct servo horn for that particular servo. Um, it's just a guesstimate. And what I've also found is when you actually put these together as well, if I go to the overhead camera, I'll show you the actual state of this, uh, this real one, if I can get this to zoom in properly. In fact, if I go down here, I've actually got this zoomed in. I think that's partly what the problem was with the... Uh, so you can see there, there's a gap between the servo horn itself and that arm. That's probably about um, half a millimeter. Oh, it's probably about one millimeters. And I'm just using like a, this, one of the servo screws to connect in there. And then on the front here, I've not quite got the distance between this, this uh, profile and the center just right. Now at the moment on this physical one I've got here, there's a bit of play. So you can see there if I go overhead like so that's got a bit of play there that's not quite how I want it to be so I'm just gonna have to re-engineer that slightly so it does work in that direction if I hold it back and I pull the servo it will open um, and probably what I need to do is just move these instead of being 10 from the center maybe I need to move them about 15 something like that so they've got a bit more leverage to go back and it just mean extending these about so um, we just need to play around with these settings a little bit so here we are back over on the uh, Fusion 360 model, zoomed in a bit more. You can see there as I as I move this and open that and close that, that's working quite nicely. But I haven't got the uh, the joint limits enabled currently, so if I push it too far, the geometry actually collides with each other. Now I think there is actually an assemble um, enable contact, and what that will do is it will calculate and it slows the the model down a little bit to try and make sure the geometry doesn't collide but it doesn't always get it right so let's uh, let's disable that for now uh, but we can see there that that is going to work quite nicely and it's quite pleasing to see that you can see the hoops we've got a bit too far there uh, it's got a bit confused let's just grab that and uh, close it so that means that we've now got um, and I've actually measured the very center point where these are if we have our if we have our little uh, eye thing and that's going to sit in the very the very center uh, let's do this on the overhead so you can see what's going on so this 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 iris here is going to sit basically inside there and it's got a millimeter all the way around it so that this can actually open and close whilst that's inside and not actually interfere with it in any way so that's going to work quite nicely so there we go that's how we do this um, so Algernon and Sini's got no sound there. My audio seems okay, but this was that. Was that? Was I talking over there and not moving the microphone? That might have been it. <laughs> what I've got to do? If I just go over here, let's go for that view there. I've actually got to move the microphone when I go over here. So if the microphone is over here and I'm talking, it'll go a bit quiet. That's probably all that's happened there. It's probably just me not using the uh, the equipment properly, <laughs> something like that. So let me uh, go back over to um, our keynote and let's. Uh, continue on we've only got a couple of minutes to go so if you like what I do and you want to help me grow the channel even more and we I think we were very nearly at 15,000 when I looked before the show I think 
yeah, we're still at, sorry, nearly 14,000. We're not quite reached that yet, I don't think. I think it's about 13,993, something like that. So we need a couple of extra people to subscribe to get us to that 14,000. Um, hopefully we can do that by the, by the end of January. I'm pretty sure we will do. But if you want to help me do that, make sure you like this video. Drop me a comment. Let me know if you've used Fusion 360 before. If you don't use Fusion 360, what tool do you use? I know a lot of people use like FreeCAD, um, is it SketchUp? There's quite a few other ones out there. Let me know what you use and I'll be interested to see that. And make sure you subscribe as well. And I do go live every single Sunday and it's live live. So if something happens, something happens. It's always interesting and fun. Uh, but we, we've got our model working today. So I'm really, really stoked about that. So yes, Sunday at seven o'clock every, uh, every single week. And if you want to learn from what we've been doing today, I've mostly written up my notes. I have got about 17 pages of other notes I need to add to this. But if you want to see uh, and make a start on that, you can go over to um, kevsrobots.com slash learn. Um, or you can basically, if I just go over to the, uh, if I just go over to the website, I can show you this live now. So if I go over to Kev's Robots, if you click on the learn button there, and then you click over here on the eye mechanism, you can see what we've actually started creating there. So I got up to the point where we created the, the hinge on the lower eyelid. So we've got the top eyelid and the lower eyelid. I just need to add the extra bits for the arms and the, the base as well. Um, but I wanted to make sure that these notes are really, really good quality. So it has been taking quite a long time to uh, to put these together. Uh, and they're all step by step. So you can click on a, a particular lesson there. You get all the different measurements. You get all the the explanation of what's going on. And there's also some like talking points as well, like... Um, you can toggle between regular lines and construction lines by pressing X when the line geometry is selected, for example. So all the different notes there. We talked about breaking lines as well. All the different learning points are highlighted there. So if you want to check that out, you can do that too. Um, so that's uh, over on um, kevsrobots.com slash learn. And if you haven't joined us on Discord, somebody said that today on Discord, it's such an amazing group. They've got the exact answer that they were looking for because I don't know all the answers and I'm not always 100% available. So there's always somebody in our Discord group who probably knows the answer. There's some really smart people in there, some really good developers. Um, so if you haven't joined that, go over to kevrobots.com slash Discord. You'll get a sign up link. It's completely free and you can join us over there for a deeper conversation. And if you've not followed me already on social media, you can go to uh, Kevin MacLear 6 on TikTok. I'm on Instagram, uh, Kevin MacLear. I'm on Twitter at Kevin Mac and I'm on uh, Mastodon at Kevsmac at the Mastodon Social. So uh, make sure you follow me on all those as well. And if you want to support the show, and I really, really, really appreciate those people that do, you can either do a super thanks, and that's available once you've uh, subscribed to the channel. I think you get like a little super thanks button appearing next to that. If you're doing this live now, you can do a super thanks, uh, sorry, super chat. Let me make sure I've got all the uh, things enabled for that. And uh, if you want to buy me a coffee, if you just want to say thanks for the 3D models or whatever, and I'll make all the 3D models available as well via kevsrobots.com, you can go to kevsrobots.com slash coffee and uh, buy me a coffee there. And if you want to join the YouTube membership program, you can do that too. You just go to uh, where the, once you click the subscribe button, that's then replaced by a join button. I think it's about the price of a coffee per month to, to join the membership program as well. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody to, who's already joined. Let me just get my mouse to the right place. There we go. And I shall tell you who those supporters are now. So here they are. <laughs> so if you want to join the uh, the Robot Overload Army, you need to go over to kesrobots.com slash credits and you can get your name in the credits like these people have here. So on our supporters, if I look up there, we have um, Justine Lutz, we've got Roland, we've got uh, Zogaldia, we have Bill, we have Mark, David, Shroomy, Derek, RGS, we've got Roland again, and we have got uh, Bill Bernard. That Those people have all bought a coffee at some point. Then members, these are the people who join the, um, the uh, Buy Me A Coffee membership program. So we've got Thomas, we've got Shemi, we have Steve Phillips. And then on the other side over here, I'm having to remember which side these are on because obviously I can't physically see the overlay here. <laughs> we've got a whole bunch of people who are YouTube members. So we've got um, uh, Sadiq, we've got Jeff, we've got WP Body, we've got Fred, we've got Bill, we've got Dale, we have Hans, um, we have Michael, we have uh, Jose, Johan, Jean-Paul and Tom, of course, as well. So thank you to all those people who support the channel. It makes the world of difference to me. 
Okay, so that's the end of my slides, and that means it's the end of the show. So uh, we'll have a quick um, live live stream catch up with people. Uh, but I've, this has been quite a long show today. I think this is one of, one of the longest ones we've done for some time. Uh, let's have a see how long we're going. We're going nearly two hours at this point, so we're going to need to wrap that up pretty soon I think okay so this is the point of the video where I say if you've been watching this on replay thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time and for the people who are watching this live let's have a see what people have been talking about uh, I think there's probably about 30 second delay between me saying something and you hearing it I think I usually click on the, uh, the ultra low latency uh, but it's not always guaranteed to to work that so let's have a see what people have been talking about it's got plenty of people on the the chat today uh, so uh, Keith was saying looks cool might want to check out James Bruton's smoothing routine for motion control I was watching that video uh, this week. So it's pretty cool how he's uh, he's got the the sort of square waves being nicely rounded out by just doing a percentage each time he had it well tuned to about 97% I think um, so for each time you you sort of move your uh, your joystick it sort of sends the command there but it only takes a percentage of that each time so that it looks much smoother and it worked really well didn't it and it's a nice new remote control um so miss brent says that hi von um you may put this on my to-do list um for may awesome yeah i can't wait for maker central really looking forward to that uh what else we've got <laughs> so Algernon was saying uh, he was late as well but um i never noticed <laughs> no detention for everybody tonight uh, <laughs> Alex always noticed. Alex is here, yawning in the background. <laughs> uh, what else have we see what we've got on here? So he's caught up with live now. Cool, cool. And he's thumbed it up, which is all good. Dale's late, but he's here. Dale's always here. Thank you, Dale. Um, so we've got James as well. James Cotter. So Hollywood Bowl. It does look like the Hollywood Bowl, doesn't it? That's the the one I was thinking about. Uh, <laughs> So too much life happening now. Hope you're doing okay, Dale. I've been uh, following you on uh, on Twitter. Um, so let's have a see. So Elgin says, non-robot question. I'd love to know if um, if uh, TY streamers, is that YouTube streamers lose anything um, by viewers watching at fast speed? No, I don't think so. I think you do see in the analytics. And you remember, you're one viewer out of potentially thousands of people that watch this. So it's only a small signal. Um, what does tend to happen is... If there's a very boring section and people want to skip to the good point, you see that as like a low retention and then a spike where they where they get to. And you see that as like a, a peak of interest, I think, if you hover over the uh, the sort of scrub bar to scrub through the video. So, uh, yeah, it takes all that information, but don't worry about it too much. It's fine. Uh, my channel isn't going to be defined by just one video. There's going to be hundreds of them. <laughs> so, yeah, I get that. So, yeah. Depends how YouTube insets the ads as well. So do you see the ads if you're watching this live? Does it pause and then catch up? I don't. I guess it doesn't, does it? You refresh you, it, it does. But does it? Ah, oh, right. But normally you don't. Interesting. Uh, so if it's based on time watching, you'll see less ads. If they base the ads on the point in the video, then no. So I know once I've hit end, it then adds mid-roll videos as well as the sort of front and back ones as well, depending on how long the video is. But if you're a YouTube premium member, you don't get those ads um, and I think I get the same cut based on that. It does tell me who peop which people are premium members and which aren't. I don't know why I would need to know that but <laughs> the guy that invented autocorrect walks into a bar. <laughs> or does a beer. Or does a bear. Love it. <laughs> uh, you can do. Uh, have a good time in Idaho, Fancy <laughs> Bean Boy. That's an unusual choice for a name. So Richard says, uh, with regarding the eye, you've missed a trick by having both pivot points on the outside. If one had been on the inside and the other position. All right, so you mean like you could rotate them around and they would both be the exact same thing. I'm looking for things like that. I also wondered about having, um, so these points on the edge where the arms connect to and they're not on the other side. I could just mirror everything across and have them exactly the same. It wouldn't make any difference to the model. That would also make, make it a bit more flexible. So I'll, I'll have a look at that. I do like the idea of optimizing these sketches. So there's a minimum number of operations to, to create the, the same thing. So yeah, I get what you're saying there, Richard. And when he says, I really need to get my head around fusion. It's one of those, I think there's a, there's a bit of a learning curve with fusion, but it's not too bad. So once you've got your head around constraints, what you'll find is when you put something together, um, you'll 
kind of get your knickers in a twist by having too many constraints and that the, the shape doesn't do what you want it to do. I always find this if I'm trying to manually create like a hexagon shape and I want it to be like a regular hexagon. Um, I find that really difficult to do with constraints because it always messes up and ends up being this weird sort of star shape, but not a hexagon. So yeah, you just need to, to practice. Practice makes perfect with that. So I guess it doesn't matter which way around the arms are attached. Um, it doesn't, though, one of them has that little uh, nodule on the end just to give it some distance between the one that sort of goes next to it, a bit like a scissor action. Um, but they're actually the same either way round. They're all 10, 10 with a bit in between, so it can be either way round. So, David said, extending your suggestion, you could model the arm attachments on both sides so the eyelids, um, um, so one eyelid could um, drop could be top or bottom and with the ability to attach an arm to either left or right. So I did make some design decisions about this robot. I wanted to have a minimum number of servos in there, but I did want it to be able to wink. So I could have one servo that does all the uh, the motions. And if you're clever with some cams, you could make it so that if the servo rot rotates one way, the eyes open. And if it rotates the other way, only one eye opens. So you could do that just using some sort of clever cam mechanism. Um, another one I've seen had full range of motion so the eyeballs themselves move left and right can go up and down. Um, they're kind of locked so as they look left and right they can't look in the between. They, they're sort of locked by one servo and up and down with one servo. But then the eyelids you could have a servo on each eyelid so you can individually make the eyelids go up and down. That seems a bit over over the top. So yeah, there's so many different things you can do with that and you just got to make a design decision there. So it's quite amazing what it can do. I'm quite impressed with what it can do too. Cool. So yeah, Aljana says I quit the browser, back in and sound few. I do have a little um, gauge on the side of my screen there that tells me what the uh, the bandwidth currently usage is and if it drops low, you'll see that as buffering. It'll I'll just pause for a second and then come back. Um, but uh, yeah, it catches up pretty quickly. Uh, is there something else you can use beside a servo to save space and because you don't need um, as much movement? Um, so what would you suggest there? What do you think we could use? Uh, servos are good because I mean, you could use a stepper motor perhaps, but they're huge and they take a lot of power. Servos are like just, they're kind of perfectly designed for this really. I don't know what else you could use. You could use a cheaper servo. The SG90s are very, very cheap. So you could, uh, you could certainly use one of them. I wanted to use these DS929MGs because they're really good quality but you do pay a bit more for that. Um, so, Dal says, catch you next week. Bye, Daryl. And uh, yeah, um, that's everything I've got on the chat there. I don't think there's anything else on the uh, the YouTube window. Let me just go and find that. Sometimes the chat gets a little bit out of sync, the one I see on my screen with what people are actually saying there, but I think we're all good. Um, also, Richard says, electronic version of a piston. So what would the electronic, like a solenoid? I mean, a solenoid is either I open or closed up or down um, they're good for like locks for like open or closed but if you want something that's an angle and you want to move between two motions because if you want the eyes to sort of slightly open or open quickly you need a servo to be able to do that kind of stuff so you do have um, you do have uh, solenoids magnets so a magnets what do you mean a motor's a magnet a servo's got a magnet in it solenoids have magnets in them i'm not sure <laughs> not sure what you suggested there richard so let, let me know your thoughts anyway i need to wrap up now because it's uh, it's gone nine o'clock and um i need to get a drink as well <laughs> so thank you so much for watching and bearing with me on this one i know it's been a long one but it's been a really fun one and i can't wait to show you bubo once it's been created and uh sprayed and has everything uh, working so i can't wait to show you that uh, so i shall see you next time so thanks for watching bye for now